and during COVID, when the economy was actually contracting because of lockdown, central banks decided it was a good time to print a lot of money. That was a mistake. Lots of journalists and actual economists have been banging their heads against a brick wall for quite a long time now, trying to make the point that the Rishi Sunak furlough scheme, Rishi Sunak is now the Prime Minister by the way, that furlough scheme which required the pumping of vast sums of money into the economy caused devastating inflation and economic destruction. To which I will add, and this is a framing which seems totally missing from anywhere, that then caused that money to be wiped out, in effect. If I give you £10 free, well that's your free money. But if I then charge you an additional £10 for something I'm selling you, then where has your money gone? It's no longer free money, it's been wiped out by the increasing cost. And that is effectively the situation. The money was a mirage. The furlough money was effectively nothing more than a loan. And many people have been banging their heads against a brick wall for a long time, saying that this is, represents economic devastation, no more so than Peter Hitchens, who has been saying this fully from the beginning, since the middle of 2020. This is a snippet from one of his talks with Mike Graham in August 2020. The inflation, which I think is now absolutely bound to happen because they've pumped quantitative easing into the public purse for the first time. One of many such comments of that nature from Hitchens over these two years. And not just him, this is two economists from GB News just a few months ago. But then when it came to lockdown, we had insane amounts of money printed, which then went into the economy and went into our mm. pockets amazingly. And that absolutely turbocharged the inflation. It's a cost of lockdown crisis. Why is inflation so high? Because having been locked down for the best part of two years, the world remains riddled with serious supply chain shortages, which is a big reason that prices everywhere are rising. These commentators have been dismissed as peddling right-wing tropes by the likes of ITV's Robert Peston. On comments made by Liz Truss, Truss may be embracing a trope among right-wing politicians and thinkers in the US and UK that quantitative easing, money creation by central banks, especially during Covid, has caused soaring global inflation. Not so strange when you understand that Peston and his like are unhappy to see lockdowns regarded as disasters because they don't want their potential future application to be undermined, and they raise the prospect of climate lockdowns or environmental lockdowns. And, in fact, partial environmental lockdowns are now happening in the city of Oxford and elsewhere. Fines if you leave your area in your car too often. They are now becoming a reality. And the simple data is clear. Inflation during lockdown period, very low. Then post-lockdown, but before the Ukraine war, so we can't blame that, suddenly exploding upwards. Damning data. But none of that matters, because now we have Mervyn King, the former governor of the Bank of England, saying what all these people have been saying, and what Hitchens has been saying since the beginning. Does it seem to you as if the markets are the ones who've been in charge? Because it seems to a lot of people, they basically bullied Liz Truss out of office. Markets are not in charge. Governments and central banks are. Markets respond to the announcements made by governments and central banks. And central banks have lost control of inflation. Governments lost control of the public finance. Not surprising that markets respond to that. And whose responsibility was it then, if both the central bank and the government lost control? Well, I think all, all central banks in the West, interestingly, made the same mistake. And during COVID, when the economy was actually contracting because of lockdown, central banks decided it was a good time to print a lot of money. That was a mistake. That led to inflation. We had too much money chasing too few goods. And the result was inflation. That was predictable. It was predicted and it happened. Mm. So that's a, one problem we have to try and get out of. There is no one better qualified to say that. The lockdowns created the economic disaster of spiralling inflation. Of course, if you do force people to stay at home who would otherwise go out to work, be it for reasons of the latest trendy plague or climate or environmental reasons, logically you have to pay them, otherwise they wouldn't be able to buy food. But in reality, they're not being paid because the inflation that that same money creates, according to the Bank of England governor, did you miss that? 
Central banks decided it was a good time to print a lot of money. That was a mistake. The inflation wipes the money out. The stay-at-home paycheck effectively wipes itself out. You don't need me to draw a diagram for that, but I'm going to do it anyway. So you make a bunch of money in the normal course of things. The money is all part of the current system. It's not being artificially pumped in, so it has no effect on prices. They tick along more or less as normal, and your money remains largely intact until you end up spending it normally. But what happens when that bag of cash you get doesn't come from the normal course of money changing hands activity, but it comes from a rampant money pumping in Ponzi scheme cooked up by some nice Indian looking fella like this one here, for instance. OK, get rid of him. Now, instead of that, we get that happening to prices, which wipes out all the money the nice man gave you. Where did it go? It went right there. It et itself. It created the inflation that destroyed it. It destroyed itself. And now, what have you got? You've got that. Absolutely nothing. Mervyn King of the Bank of England has told us that the lockdowns created the explosive inflation. I have then gone on to make the point that the inflation then wipes out the furlough money, the free pizza money. So, point number one. Lockdowns, by definition, unavoidably make you poorer, because you're not earning money because any of the fake money is wiped out with inflation. Point number two. Did Free Money Mickey here not know that? Other people did know, and people not so high-ranking as the Chancellor of the Exchequer. The inflation, which I think is now absolutely bound to happen because they've pumped quantitative easing into the public purse for the first time. Did Reckless Rishi not know himself? Well, according to him, he might well have. What we weren't told. Chris Whitty and Patrick Vallance, the Chief Medical Officer and Chief Scientific Advisor, would openly admit that lockdown could do more harm than good. A cost-benefit calculation, a basic requirement for pretty much every public health intervention, was never made. I wasn't allowed to talk about the trade-off, says Sunak. Ministers were briefed by Number 10 on how to handle questions about the side effects of lockdown. The script was not to ever acknowledge them. The script was, oh, there's no trade-off because doing this for our health is good for the economy. A general acknowledgement of the catastrophic consequences. So, if you don't want to be unavoidably poorer, the next time some billionaire says to you, you've got to stay at home, but don't worry, because I'll pay you to do it. In the first place, completely ignore him. And in the second place, say to anyone for whom it might be relevant, your employer or whoever, point them to that clip of Mervyn King, the former governor of the Bank of England, the highest conceivable authority, that what you're being asked to do will lead to financial Armageddon. All central banks in the West, interestingly, made the same mistake. And during COVID, when the economy was actually contracting because of lockdown, central banks decided it was a good time to print a lot of money. That was a mistake. That led to inflation. We had too much money chasing too few goods, and the result was inflation. That was predictable. It was predicted, and it happened.